Good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, it's Paul here. Here we are, June the twenty uh, fourth, and uh, here we are for session forty four of the Admiral Markets webinar series of mastering the four M's of trading. Uh, as always, we'll start with a quick risk disclaimer before we dig into our main material for today. Trading with financial instruments offered by Admiral Markets carries a high level of risk, which is not suitable for all investors due to their complex nature. Before entering into client agreements or making a transaction, please make sure to read the terms and conditions of our service. Consult a specialist if necessary to ensure you understand the risks involved in trading. This presentation and the accompanying videos for information and educational purposes only. Online education materials are developed by Admiral Markets and distributed by Admiral Markets Group investment firms for a global audience. Therefore, please take into consideration that the information in this session may not be suitable for everyone. Presentation and accompanying videos should not be taken as advice for investing as they only represent the personal opinion of the authors. As of August 2018, the regulation within the European Union differs for retail clients and professional clients. In our presentation, we use demo trading accounts where all clients can still use a high leverage in a risk-free environment. Before opening a live trading account, please consider the differences between retail and professional trading terms. Retail clients benefit from unlimited negative balance protection. Professional clients at Admiral Markets UK receive a compensation of account deficits with a maximum payout of £50,000 sterling as per our negative balance protection policy. Admiral Markets is a uh, truly global broker and we'd like you to consider trading with us, as you can see there, for uh, our uh, two of our most popular trading uh, instruments, DAX 30 and Euro Dollar. We provide very uh, competitive tight spreads during uh, the main market hours uh, and also we provide the MT4 and MT5 platform with our own Admiral Markets Supreme Edition plugin. As I said, uh, Admiral Markets is a global brokerage and is uh, registered and regulated in many entities, several entities across the globe. If you speak to your account representative, they'll be happy to, uh, to guide you towards which is the most suitable entity for you to open a trading account with. As always, we like to set our expectations for our sessions, that for ourselves, it's to educate you about the forums of trading so you can go away, begin to analyze any market and be ready to trade it, and also allow you to have raise your self-awareness about managing risk and managing yourself. And for yourself, ladies and gentlemen, as always, we have a broad range of experience joining us for our webinar series, and we're under a time limitation of 40 to 45 minutes. So that sometimes limits us in terms of the breadth and depth that we can enter into our topics. But we always like to sort of try and focus on tools that are uh, immediately relevant to you and that you can utilize in your own trading tomorrow. As always, the crux of the uh, Mastering the Four M's of Trading has always been about understanding markets, method, money, and myself. Understanding that each one of those, let's say, silos individually, but also recognizing how when they come together, that's what creates the sweet spot that allows a trader to trade well. If you want to learn more about those individual uh, silos, markets, method, money, and myself, well, then if you go back to the uh, very start of the uh, Master of Four Hours of Trading webinar series, which you will find on the Admiral Markets YouTube channel and on the Admiral Markets Global Facebook page, you'll be able to access them and look at, uh, into them in greater detail. So, you know, what we've said is, uh, over the last couple of weeks is we're coming towards the end of this particular series over the next week or two. Uh, and really what we're looking for is to see, you know, how can we draw our 4M learning points from this series? You know, we've talked about how do we prepare for our trading day, which is all about managing myself. How do we follow our 10 steps? OK, which is about having a process. And that's about once again about managing myself. How do we do our market analysis? Well, not surprisingly, that's the market. How we choose our entry for you know, mastering, mastering the method. How we look to manage our risk, which is all about mastering money. How we record and review our trades and how we manage our training performance, all of which is about mastering the myself element of those four Ms. And that's what we've been touching on over about the last month, if you've uh, joined us, uh, and what we'll be doing for the next, you know, for the remainder of uh, the remainder of the few weeks of the, uh, the series that we have um, running here. So, 
What we've uh, talked about last week was an introduction to cognitive biases. I'll, I'll recap just the first few intro slides before we move on to looking at some more of them. But uh, what we talked about last week was about sort of posing the question about, you know, have you ever been afraid to enter a big trade for fear of taking a huge loss? Or have you ever sort of just, you know, held onto a position just for a bit too long because you've been greedy for more profit? And then who can honestly say that they have always exited the losing trade at the earliest opportunity? And I've never just waited a few more seconds to see if that trade will turn around. We sort of posed those questions last week. And, you know, I would hope to say that, you know, all of you have experienced that at some point or another in your trading career. Or if you're completely new, I, I guarantee you will at some point. And what we want to do is to recognize, you know, how do these things happen? Why do they occur? And what can we actually do to help ourselves? Well, you know, what we talked about is that, you know, most trading books, educators and coaches tell you that you must learn to banish fear and greed and leave it at that, which is a bit like telling a smoker to give up smoking by learning to stop pot cigarettes in your mouth. Okay? If only it was that simple as the same with the same with trading. Fear and greed are within us for a good reason, ladies and gentlemen. You know, they've been there since our uh, days as cavemen and cave women. They're never going to leave us. All right. What we need to do as traders is learn to recognize them understand them and try to subvert them so they work for us rather than against us. So, you know, even we, as we sort of spoke about last week, it's a case of, you know, trying to be uh, work out that, you know, our brain is trying to sabotage our trade execution. Knowing what to do is one thing, but having the mental discipline to do it is, uh, is quite another. And that's actually, you know, what we know a lot of this, this particular section and actually a lot of the, the Mastering the 4Ms webinar series has been about is that, you know, most traders know what to do, but it's about having the mental discipline to, to do it, which is quite something else. And that's why we focus on building a nice little 10 step trading plan that becomes a process that you can follow trade after trade to help you develop as a trader. So, you know, as we uh, learn and develop and evolve as a trader, it becomes about having the mental fortitude to take a loss without hesitation or to ignore the nagging doubts that plague us from time to time and enter trades fearlessly. About keeping going when the chips are down, so when it feels like the market is against you, and it becomes about what we call the inner game, all right, that separates the winners from the losers in this endeavor. It becomes a lot about what is going on between your ears, those few inches between your ears in terms of what you're hearing and what you're thinking and how you act. It's about understanding that inner in the game, and that is genuinely what separates winners from losers time and time again. What we talked about was, you know, understanding that, you know, there's that hidden side of you. And according to research, up to 90% of what happens in your brain happens on a subconscious level. So just think about that. 90% of all your thinking, decision-making actions happen without you being aware of that. Just And just think of that, you know, A, in terms of just your everyday life, the way you lead it, but also just the way you come to the market, the way you come to make trading decisions, that can all have a huge big impact on that as well. And that's what we've been talked about last week. And that's what we're gonna sort of uncover a little bit more of this week. So we talked about, you know, you've got to think about in a way you're at war, okay? You might not know it, but there's a fight raging inside your head right now. And it's a bit of a conflict between different regions of your brain. So as we said, you know, part of your uh, brain will be sending you a message saying that, you know, you should eat, you should procreate, you should acquire supplies, you need to remove your enemies. Then there's another part of your brain, the lazy part, telling you to go and switch on the telly or play a game, go to sleep. Anything that will let it shut down <clears throat> and avoid working. You know, and as in any war, uh, uh, each side thinks it's the fighting for the uh, cause of righteousness. And it is partly correct, but what we'll do is as we talk about some of these biases, it'll start to make us realize, you know, how they impact us and what we can do about it. So, you know, they kind of, you know, we touched on, uh, we touched on Maslow's hierarchy of needs there, okay, and about understanding that, you know, at our most basic human needs, okay, in terms of physiological and safety needs, we need food, water, warmth, rest, security and safety. Once we have that in place, well, then actually, then we can start to move on to our psychological needs. That's about intimate relationships, friendships, about prestige. It's a feeling of accomplishment. And then finally, it's that last one of self-actualization, achieving one's full potential, including creative activities. And it's about us being able to sort of transition 
transition through those levels to actually you know, achieving our level of self-actualization as a world-class trader, that is what every trader is working towards. And we all, we all make progress towards that point in our own time and space, in our own, you know, in, in, in our, uh, at our own pace, okay? Some people, will, uh, some people will learn very, very quickly. Others will struggle, and that's, that's okay. We all, we all go at our own pace. So if you remember what we talked about last week is about how fear is our number one driver for survival, all right? It's a primal emotion that resides deep in the amygdala, the oldest part of the brain. Fear is so success successful in ensuring the continued existence of life that it survived every step of evolution. Fear is so deeply embedded within us that we can never hope to eliminate it. We just must learn to control it or better yet, use it. So just you know, take a note of that fear, okay, is so deeply embedded within us that we can never hope to eliminate it, all right? So you will, you will never ever, you know, not be experiencing fear in one way or another. It's about us to learn how to use it to our best. How to learn it to use it to our best advantage. On the flip side, we have greed, all right, okay? Almost all of the problems we encounter in our trading are born of fear. Even greed is a response to that emotion. Greed can be traced back through our evolution. In a modern society, there should be more than enough to go around, and yet the greed response is in, etched into our amygdala. Greed is just, you know, it's the fear of missing out. Okay, that's it, FOMO. The, you know, it's just another version of fear. So, you know, it's that fear is the engine that drives all our subconsciouses and, and humans developed a number of high level behaviors that were away in the background, informing our choices and nudging our decisions in a certain direction. Most of that time, we're blissfully unaware of them. We may not even realize they exist at all. These behaviors are called cognitive biases. And it's important to understand that most of the time we are blissfully unaware of them. We may not even realize that they exist at all. Can't switch off your fear engine, but you can subvert it by these high level biases. But first you need to know what they are and what they're trying to do. And the more we understand that, the more we'll recognize when we're actually showing that ourselves in our own trading behaviors. So last week we looked at a few and uh, different sort of cognitive biases. This week we're gonna look at a few more, okay? So we're gonna start by looking at optimism bias, all right? Optimism biases, the sheer number of insurmountable problems in the world means that individually we could never hope to overcome them all, all right? If we spent our lives dwelling on all of them, we'd never get anything done. Think about that. So we don't think about them, okay? What happens is we filter those inputs from our senses. And we all, and I say all of us, have an inbuilt optimism bias that works to intercept information that we don't want to know about or that doesn't match our worldview and discard it before it even reaches our conscious mind. Think about that, okay? That optimism bias looks to intercept information that we just don't know, we don't like, okay? It doesn't match our present view of the world and we'll discard it before it even reaches our conscious mind. Think about that, that's just quite something. Furthermore, what happens is, you know, as it's discarding that information we don't want to hear, it's tending to put more weighting on positive information, which is deemed beneficial, and to reject that negative information. So, for example, newlywed people, they consistently predict their marriages will last their lifetime, even when they are shown divorce statistics, which imply that it's unlikely to happen. So, you know, even the pessimists amongst us are deep down irrationally optimistic as people. It's fascinating. And just think about what happens when lots of people come to the market with that irrationally optimistic viewpoint on what's going on with their uh, trades. So for traders, we rely on charts and data to base our trading decisions. We have to interpret raw information. But if our subconscious mind is filtering out anything that doesn't match what we want to see, or if it's rejecting bad news, then we're not getting the full picture. We're making choices based on partial facts, and our built-in optimism means we have a tendency to see what we'd like to see rather than what's really there. And that is key for a trader. Our built-in optimism means we have a tendency to see what we'd like to see 
rather than what's really there. So as traders, we experience optimism bias as one, overestimating our ability, two, underestimating risk or pain, three, not accepting the warning signs or overestimating targets or not exiting because of greed. Just think about those four elements, okay? I'm sure that all of you at some point or another have done that in your own trading, okay? You've overestimated your ability, you've underestimated the risk involved, you've not accepted the warning signs that have you know, maybe been showing you that that trade is, uh, is you know, gonna fail, or you've been overestimating targets or not exiting because you're, you know, you're experiencing an element of greed. Okay, so you know, we all experience that in our own way, and it is part of it is about recognizing and understanding that within our own experience. So that was optimism bias. So let's have a look at the other side of the optimism bias coin, which is confirmation bias, all right? Confirmation bias, the tendency to overvalue data that supports a pre-existing belief. This is where in confirmation bias, instead of blocking out data that is detrimental to us, confirmation bias seeks out the positive and boosts it, presenting it to our conscious mind as a front page news flash. So it's shouting to you, you are right, you are right, you are right in no uncertain terms. And the truth is, especially for traders, everybody loves to be right, don't they? Everybody loves to be right. So if you have confirmation bias ticking away, running away, okay, blocking out uh, bad data and just overestimating the good data, that just helps feed that message to you that I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. And that can be dangerous. So for a trader's example here, so, you know, we decide to try a new little strategy that we've, <clears throat> that we've either been given or we've developed. We take 10 trades, eight of those trades are losers, two of them are winners. Subconsciously, we bury the losers, we ignore them, we forget about them, okay? But the two profitable trades, well, those are the ones we take to heart, okay? Those we, we latch onto. They boost our faith, even though the bigger picture says otherwise. I'm sure when you've done that or thinking about that, I'm sure in your own trading experience, you might have done that to yourself, you might have experienced that it's, well, now you know it has a name, now you know it's just, you know, it doesn't make you unique, it's actually everybody experiences that kind of phenomenon. So these two biases, optimism and confirmation bias, they conspire together to upset our best efforts. They hide the truth from us. So what can we do? Well, here's a little very simple trick. The first simple tool is to turn your chart upside down. Now I know some charting packages allow you to do that, but you don't, you know, these days if you're trading on a tablet, and, you know, if you're trading on a tablet or a surface tool, or then have a look at when you see a, what you think is a signal, just turn your chart upside down. And it's incredibly effective because it hijacks our confirmation and our optimism bias and uses their power for good. By turning the chart upside down, you can confuse the bias. So try it. Just when you see your uh, next trade set up, and if you're trading from your uh, tablet, just flip your chart upside down to see that does it actually just clear out the optimism confirmation bias you may have been experiencing. So you might have been looking at, you know, what you thought, you might be looking at what you thought was a wonderful long trade setting up. Prices pull back, you look at it and you think this is a great, it's a trade going all the way to the moon. But when you flip it around and look at it as a possible short, well, then you see that actually perhaps it doesn't have that much strength to go short, or perhaps it doesn't actually have the legs, or it's a little bit, a little bit of a feeble trade idea, and then you decide to actually just avoid that trade. 
So just give it a try. Just see if it actually helps you sort of uh, look at the market in a different way. So this next one is called illusory correlation. Some of you may have heard of it, but I appreciate it for you know many of the people here. It'll be a new, um, it'll be a new experience. So, what was the weather like the last time you made a really good profitable trade? Think about that. What was the weather like the last time you made a really good profitable trade? What you didn't notice that? Well, quite right too. All right, you didn't really, you probably didn't realize what the weather was like. You probably didn't make a record of what the weather was like in your trading journal. Yet traders have a tendency to attach mystical powers to all sort of things when it comes to explaining performance. This is called illusory correlation. Looking for correlation, but illusory means that the truth of the matter is it's just not there. Illusory correlation is particularly toxic because it provides the seeds of poor judgment and are subsequently fed and watered by optimism and confirmation bias. You can see how those parts all coming together start actually feeding each other. That's what just makes things, you know, uh, seem worse for you. So, you know, for those of you who like Formula One motorsport, back in the day, David Coulthard was a Formula One uh, racing driver, and he used to talk about his lucky underpants, even though they bore no basis to his driving success. Every time he did win, confirmation bias reinforced the link that illusory correlation first created. And the times he lost or he crashed out of the race, well, optimism bias made sure that those, I, those items or those experiences were quietly forgotten about. So hopefully maybe you can see traders like that, okay? Every time, you know, thinks that every time it's a sunny day, that trader wins and every time he does win and it's a sunny day, well, then that basically confirmation bias just confirms that illusory correlation. And the, you know, the times that you know, that trader lost because it was a, a rainy day, well, then, you know, optimism bias makes sure that they just ignore those, uh, ignore that sort of um, inconvenient truths uh, in their trade records. So it's you know, kind of a fascinating subject. Lots of people might like to think, oh, this would never happen, or, you know, it's just strange to happen, but I assure you it happens all the time to traders of all particular, you know, size and scope. The flip side to illusory cor correlation is when we attribute our failures to an outside influence. And by that, I mean anything other than us, the trader taking responsibility. The former uh, Arsenal manager, Arsene Wenger, he built a whole career on this, okay? Whenever you saw him interviewed and his team had lost or his team had lost a goal, he would all say, no, I never saw that. It's not my fault. I didn't understand that. I never saw that, okay? He was going through you know, his own version of illusory correlation in terms of, you know, attributing failures to an outside influence. And that's uh, one of the things that caught up with him in the end. So with illusory correlation, it's tempting to hang a loss on some arbitrary reasoning when we did follow the plan. This means that A, sometimes we just have to admit that things didn't work out, and B, there's nothing we can do about it. And what it is is that as humans, we hate not being able to explain everything in our world, hence why we have conspiracy theorists. Human beings feel a need to explain everything. And that's what we're sort of looking to, uh, to sort of use for our, uh, our own benefit. So, with illusory correlation, how do we work with it? How do we, you know, how do we sort of bend it to our own uh, benefits? Well, correlation is good. And, we, you know, we did talk about a, a form of correlation, you know, a good few weeks back. But illusory correlation is bad. And we need to make correlation work for us. And that means 
dumping the illusions and working with the truth. So here's how we do it. When we exit a trade, our subconscious mind immediately fires up its correlation engine. So we must feed our correlation engine with only the information we know to be important. Good information would be anything related to our execution of that trade. So make sure you write this detail down, okay? And as I mean, make sure you write the details down of your trade. No tapping on a keyboard, all right? Physically write down your trade details. There's a kinesthetic quality towards you actually being able to write down what happened in that trade. That action triggers biological activity within your brain, engaging more neurosis, your own sorry. A trading journal is ideal for hacking illusory correlation. So you'll have heard me, you know, from the start of this series, talking about the importance of keeping good records of your trades and also for writing a trading journal. And here, if you didn't know any other reason why to have one, this just having been able to sort of hack illusory correlation is a fantastic way to start by actually uh, um, sort of uh, uh, helping yourself in terms of improving your trading ability. So when it comes to illusory correlation, make sure that you're scoring yourself on execution rather than outcome. It forces you to think about what really matters, the execution rather than what doesn't. I want my correlation engine to take notice of how well I followed my trading plan. And this is why I've enforced keeping trading records and journals right from the start of coaching traders. The reason is it works, ladies and gentlemen. It helps you defeat illusory correlation and it helps you correlate okay, your behavior with the right habits, okay, the right traits. And that is what we're looking to try and do for you. That's what we're looking to try and aim for. So here's another uh, cognitive bias, okay, apophenia. All right, well, what is that apophenia? Basically, it's when we're seeing patterns which aren't really there. When we experience visual or audible stimuli, okay, then science call this apophenia pareidolia. I may have not have pronounced that right, but for the purposes of this, apophenia pareidolia. So, you know, if you've ever seen a face in a cloud or an image in a rock face, then you have experienced pa pareidolia, okay? Sometimes you see, you know, sometimes you see uh, articles in the newspapers when it's quiet over the summer, where people have sort of, you know, seen images of Jesus Christ or their parents in toast or in, uh, in a piece of bread or in a cloud, okay? And that is actually what we see is people experiencing apophenia pareidolia, basically seeing patterns which aren't really there. So, however, it can go much further. For example, when we start attributing luck to patterns as a trader, that's a very dangerous thing to do. Yet we all do this sort of thing because we're all human and we're all programmed to look for patterns even when none can exist. That's very key to know as a trader. The human brain is a pattern recognition supercomputer. Correlation helps us discover new information, but pattern recognition takes that ability and turbocharges it, which can work really well for us, but also very, very badly as well. And that's what we're actually looking to try and make use of in our own trading. So, you know, we use patterns as traders, however, men, traders, especially novice ones, either see patterns that aren't there or aren't fully formed. And I've seen this many, many times with new coaching um, traders, okay, new trader clients is that they're so very keen, so excited to get involved with the trades that they basically, they see patterns that aren't really there or have yet to fully form. And then because they're a bit too early, they invariably end up in a, uh, in a sore spot. So it's a case of suddenly everything looks like a great potential trade. And if you half close your eyes and look at squinting through your eyes, okay, then you might be able to convince yourself that it is a good trade. 
But let me just say here and now, ladies and gentlemen, you know, good trades will leap off the chart at you. Okay, you don't need to, you don't need to actually sort of fight your way through the uh, um, through you know sort of various trading challenges. Okay, it is about just if you can recognize your pattern. Okay, if you know what it is, uh, you know, and you're very clear on what has to go into define it. Well, then that helps you avoid that uh, apophenia pareidolia. So, you know, quite often when we have a bad run, we start using apophenia, okay? We start saying to ourselves such things as well, you know, the market makers are hunting my stops. Is our broker deliberately messing with our trades? We're having a bad run of luck, et cetera. Even that conversation can actually just sort of encourage that apophenia pareidolia. And that's not terribly helpful to us as traders, so we need to be aware of how we can counter that. And the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, that just sometimes trades just don't work out. Even the very, very best trade in the world might be a super trade. You might have it all penned out. You might have it all risk managed. You might meet all of your criteria. You know, the trade works well. It triggers. It starts to move in your direction. And then, I don't know, next day, Mr. Trump comes out and tweets something which just blows your trade out of the water. Lots of people will be very disappointed thinking that they're just no good at it, but you know, there's a, it's about recognizing that that happens and that there's a random distribution of data. Sometimes a few losses will happen in close proximity. And the truth is that sometimes some trades just don't work out. So how do you deal with it? Well, next time you have a bad run, Apophenia is gonna pop up and bite you. And as always, the answer is education. Go and visit your broker, call them, ask to see, you know, ask, go and uh, have a chat with them and spend some time on their trading floor. Chat to them, okay, and about how they operate. And I don't mean just necessarily, you know, putting a trail on just through the, uh, by, uh, by email through the dealing desk. Call up the dealing desk, okay, once a month on one of your trades, just call up the dealing desk and actually ask to them and just start to build a rapport, start to build a, uh, a relationship with them, because you never know where that might actually take you as a, as a trader. So how do we deal with that apophenia? Well, it's part of your pre-trading routine, building some elements to deal with apophenia. Even so some very simple one level line affirmations, things like, I'm an insignificant player. Nobody's out to get me. Nobody even else even knows what I'm doing. It just helps to reinforce your brain to filter out that apophenia. That's what we're looking for. So there are a whole host of other biases and heuristics that we can uh, cover on. And, uh, um, you know, some of them you can have a little click on the link there to help you with things like hyperbolic discounting and irrational escalation. And they're all subject to cognitive biases called psychological heuristics. Uh, and actually what we have here when we talk about psychological heuristics is contrast bias, social proof, scarcity, ambiguity effect, anchoring, gambler's folly and the knowledge gap. And I guarantee, you know, basically taking the time to, to read this, something like the, uh, uh, the uh, 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 just reading sort of the good books on these kind of biases, heuristics, which I'm going to have at the uh, end of this slideshow, will actually help you educate you, make you a much, much better trader. So if you'd like to read more on these, you know, these kind of uh, phenomenon, well, you can read there's a book called The Chimp Paradox by uh, Dr. Stephen Peters. You can also read Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman, which is a little bit academic, but interesting. A very sort of a, a lowbrow version of it is The Art of Thinking Clearly by Rolf de Belli. He's, a, he's an Italian chap, but you know, it's, his word has all been um, translated and it's a kind of a little bit more of an easier read than the Kahneman's book if you're beginning just to look into this area. Uh, and you can also have a look at Fooled by Randomness by Nassim Taleb, all very, very good books, very uh, you know, sound books. So just to finish off, as always, ladies and gentlemen, our quick 10, uh, our 10 steps, all right? Step one, define levels of support and resistance. Step two, define if there is a trend. Step three, wait, see how price reacts at key support and resistance levels. Step four, look for price action signals at support resistance levels. Step five, are they part of a bigger chart pattern? That's actually kind of useful as well. Step six, define risk, okay? Define your risk, accept it and stick to it. Step seven, reward targets or trailing. Hopefully, you know, as you said, you know, seen here, you know, we have uh, talked about none of the sort of trading stuff we've talked about is really sort of trailing 
and uh, sort of trading stops in the sense of uh, of our uh, trade. It's about us, you know, having targets, but it's about us knowing our exit before we enter the trade, and that is absolutely key. Step eight, which is what we've just been talking about, is keeping scrupulous records. Okay, that's how you to allow you to hack the illusory correlation. It allow you to, to focus and learn on the stuff that you've been doing well. You can improve your uh, trades by debriefing your uh, your trades, and that is actually the quickest way to go about sort of improving your performance. And finally, repeat. Consistency and discipline are key. Very difficult to be disciplined without being consistent, and likewise, and they're very, very useful to, uh, to each other as you help develop and build a trading business. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, just to finish up, okay, remember you're always looking to manage those four ends of trading, okay, so you've got markets, method, money, and myself, are they all in alignment, can they uh, uh, sort of, uh, if they are in alignment, then that's the opportunity for you to trade well, if they're not, then don't expect outsized returns, and constantly monitor those particular four areas, markets, method, money, and myself. So as always, ladies and gentlemen, this uh, this video will be uh, available on the uh, YouTube channel on Facebook to to watch. It'll also be on the uh, um, also be on the um, <laughs> also be on uh, uh, the uh, YouTube.com Admiral Markets page. Also Facebook.com Admiral Markets Global. If you want to get in touch with us, you can call us on that London number 02035140756. Or you can email us at hello at admiralmarkets.com. We'll be very, very happy to answer your questions. I hope you found that uh, useful, ladies and gentlemen. I hope it gives you plenty to think about. There's, uh, you know, the more you uh, trade, the more you'll understand and see these phenomena happening about you. The more you're able to understand them and the more you're able to sort of learn from them and see when you're experiencing them yourself, they will help you in your own particular uh, trading and decision making. So um, as always, I wish you the very best of success in your own trading, and I look forward to speaking to you soon on the next installment of the Admiral Markets Mastering the Four M's of Trading webinar. Many thanks.